Hi, this is Don Hobbs. I'm here at the Small Business Festival and it's very exciting what's been going on. We've had so many great speakers, uh, great panels. In fact, there's one going on right now, but I, I grabbed a guy that was on stage that I was really impressed with. His name is Kerry Young and he's the president of IT Freedom. And Kerry, it was really awesome to hear your story. And actually, I, I got to tell you, there was a point where uh, I think you got tears in your eyes, but I know I did. And I, <laughs> so I want to talk about that. We're going to get there, but welcome, welcome. And, and thank you for everything you did at the festival. Oh, you're welcome. I hope you don't want me to repeat that. <laughs> uh, no, well, we might get there. Who knows? We'll see yeah. where it goes. Uh, you know, I love the story, and I, I, you know, was sharing with you a little while ago that I could relate so much to the story that occurred. But you started back in 1989, or uh, yeah, 1999 actually. Right. And in before the turn of the century. Before the turn of the century, back in the 1800s. Which back then, <laughs> meant a different century. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> That's true. Uh, take us through uh, the founding parts of this and then you know your intention of course which tell us what you do really give us uh, some insight as to what you do. IT, IT Freedom is an IT services company we essentially provide an outsourced IT department for small businesses we're entirely Austin based all of our customers are Austin based um, we provide both remote desktop support phone support as well as on-site support help um, Companies, for example, when they when they hire new employees, get them set up on their computers, okay. administer their servers, um, provide their network security, all of that stuff. Good. So, uh, primarily, probably companies that are in those smaller stages where they haven't yet got their own IT department. You are they're outsourced, right? Yes. Yeah. And we will take companies as small as you know, ten users or so, and and stick with them until they're over 100 users because we up. still provide value for them. Yeah, that's awesome. So you went and, and began to grow the company and where I kind of walked in on the uh, your stage uh, presentation was uh, you hit some hard times. We get to 19 or 2000 and uh, probably, I don't know, seven or eight, somewhere in that range when the economic downturn hit and, yeah. and it hit you. It, I know yeah, it hit it, me. so I, It hit us really hard, it, yeah. but it's actually our own dang fault. Um, like a lot of when you hit hard times frequently, it's because you shouldn't have been out on the water in the first place. Um, and so we were at, in 2008, which, so we were like nine years old, um, and we just, we had outgrown our office space and leased a much larger space than we actually needed. It, the rent was huge. We um, got a big construction loan to build out the space, which added to our expenses. Um, we were doing great business-wise, so we thought we could handle it, no problem. But we were stretched thin. Um, and then our largest customer, which at the time represented 40% of our revenue, went away. They got bought out and took their IT services in-house. Mm -hmm. So we had these huge expenses and major loss of revenue. and. It just all went downhill from there. <laughs> and then on top of that, the recession hit, and all of our other customers started treading water, um, being real careful with their spending. So we just went through some really hard times, um, salary cuts. Uh, my wife, who's our CFO, and I both took a 50% pay cut for several years. Um, our staff took a 10% pay cut, um, and we just. We just kept paddling through the whole thing and bailing water and paddling some more, and and we got through it all. Uh, but it was it was a painful time. Well, let's talk about the. I, I hate to bring up the painful time. I can, <laughs> like I said, I can relate because I was I had a company. We went through the same thing. We had to downsize. We had to, you know, you tears and and just a lot of you know yeah. un, unpleasant stuff. Yeah, and the interesting part about this and, and your story actually, where I think it's so important, is that. So much of the time in seminars, we hear the successes, and we hear all about the great stuff, and nobody ever talks about the downtimes, and there always are downtimes. There's no oh, business exactly. that's just straight up, right? And that's how you learn. I think yep. we're a much wiser company now. We're much more conservative fiscally. We make sure we have money in the bank, and we don't. We really try to preserve cash and, and be consistently profitable. Did you get to that point where you felt invincible at one point in time? When you were, when you were rocking it, yeah, I think it. we were cocky. We were, I don't we were too but, cocky. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and we we just made some some bad, in retrospect, naive business decisions. Didn't really think it all the way through, and and really consider the risks. Uh, well, it, it, 
to that point, and I'm thinking about times now, we've been in a good run. We came out of a tough time. We're now in a good right. run. And yet, you know, from a from an ups and downs standpoint and the trends, we look like we're heading into another one. And there's a lot of people that have forgotten, and we get into that place where we're, we're spending and life is good and everything's great. And I'm like, you know, first of all, if you're not doing well right now, then uh, watch out, right? And if you're doing well right now, you know, just be smart, yeah, right? We're, we're be smart. still trying to, to bankroll as much there you go. <laughs> cash as we can because you just never know what's going to happen. The story that I was trying to tell was was really about our ownership culture and how we how we started off. I started off, I'd always wanted everybody to have a stake in the company. And um, we eventually got there. So we're now 15% employee owned and are eventually going to be, by 2024, we hope to be 50%, 51% employee owned and eventually 100% employee owned. And that's the like the best part for me. I just really proud of, of being able to accomplish that. Yeah, that's awesome. So you've got you've done it through a NESOP? Yeah. And you've you've turned it over so in time and it and it's an exit strategy for you. At yeah, the same it's time a, it's a great way to give back to the people who right. you know made it all happen, right? Right. And and it's all the sale of the company from me to our employee trust is all being done through the profits that they generated. So That's great. How did they respond? So you, there you are in front of the group, and you're and you're giving them the good news. You know, it's, it's kind of hard to say because they were speechless, um, but they were they were excited because when I was done explaining what it meant, they were all cheering, and <laughs> applauding, and it was it was a special time. <laughs> I'm guessing you were too. Yeah. Let's talk about the um, the that time when you were deciding about this employee base. I want to dig in. There are people on the you know, in the viewership here that are figuring out, like, what does that mean? I mean, how do I do that, right? So a couple things that strike me. I want to say something, and I want to talk to you about what sure. you did, because one of the things that I know is that very often we don't think about what the company looks like in the future. You know, almost everybody starts a company, and you're like, I'm happy to even be alive, making some money, and we hire a second person, third person. You might start growing it that way. Rarely do we ever go, what I'm building is that, and that's where we're headed, and then start backing up into it, right? You then went down, and when you come back the second time around, in essence, you know, you're, you're back as a fresh company, you have more vision for it. And, of course, it seems like that's where the vision for this employee-owned company was. Is that true, or you already, ha already had that vision? I don't know if, if I've had any kind of brilliant vision, per se. Um, well, you worked, it's just, worked out well, for you, Carrie. <laughs> what's happened, to be honest, is that I've... I've hired people and promoted people that that <laughs> do everything I did so much better than I did, and they That's just great. they just gradually kept saying, "Get out of the way, let me do this." And I was happy to let them do that. And so now we're at the point where they're they're running the company, and they're just it's amazing what they're doing. They're um, making changes that are that are going to be dramatic I think for the company we're really focusing on our most profitable services we're identifying where we need the key people and hiring them and they're just they're they've been together so long because they all grew up you know they, pretty much everybody started entry level on our help desk and our leadership team has been with the company and they've been with each other so long they know each other and and um, work really well together. That's so, cool. So it's like a family. It is. It's. Is that the culture? I mean, is that part of the culture? Yeah, that's and especially lately, I think, for whatever reason, our our staff has is is. I don't know if they've gotten younger as we've hired people, but <laughs> when you tend to hire a lot of entry level people, and we we promote from within, we right. we very rarely hire higher level people right and we um, and so um, we have a lot of people that are really young and energetic and it's really fun to watch how they interact with each other um, we've started using slack at work it's social media mm -hmm. for work and I just watch them and it's just <laughs> it's it's hilarious actually you know they they'll be on the help desk channel solving problems on, on, on Slack, chatting with each other, and then every once in a while, 
somebody will post something goofy on the random channel and then they'll go off in this this conversation for like 10 minutes just you're you're going like okay time to get back to work <laughs> you know but they just i don't i don't say anything because you know you need to have a break every once in a while and they just it really has made the whole team kind of gel come together yeah that's it's, excellent it's pretty cool the um the part of it that i think of in terms of um what you just talked about is you know first of all you've got some talent who has come in and really taken the role taking the ownership we call you know we talk in terms of always hiring talent not employees like we're not looking for job roles we're looking for talent and actually one of the thing you probably have found uh, and I, if, if it makes sense to you talk about that we talk about hiring empire builders people who come in and and say get out of the way so I I'll, I'll take this thing you know give me the ball coach right yeah and so it sounds like you've got several that have actually stepped into those roles as you were kind of describing the company talk a little bit about those people and what they did to get uh, to that place um, yeah all of them Jeff our operations director who I just promoted to CEO last year um, he's He's, I don't know how to describe him. He's like a savant. He just, he's not into anything, you know, any kind of sexy products or services. He, he just wants us to be profitable and, and grow. And he just has that single-minded focus. And he's just this incredible operations person, you know, ideal person you'd want for, a, for you know, a left-hand man. And when you watch him work, you realize that, that, you know, people tend to think of entrepreneurs as the brilliant idea types and the managers as the more, I don't know, less smart or something like that. But when you see somebody like that operate, you realize the brilliance that's involved in, in actually running a company. Mm -hmm. I mean, I like, I had a lot of fun, I've had a lot of fun building the company, but I'm not, I'm not a great manager. Jeff, on the other hand, is just, an amazing manager. Um, he does amazing things with his people, and he's he's largely responsible for this, for really um, encouraging and developing, continuing to encourage and develop this ownership culture that we have. That's cool. Well, I want to talk about a couple of things real quickly as we kind of recap. Uh, first of all, thank you. What I I loved what I loved. I walked in and, and late, and when I just saw how you were, I thought. How heartfelt is this man? And you can tell the impact you've had on the people, and you can also tell the, the impact they've given back to you. Meaning, yeah, the fact that you were giving the company over to them or selling the company to them was not a surprise. It was pretty cool. <laughs> so, congratulations on Thank your you. success. I think what I heard too is that you know, as you're as you're building a company, we're all going to go through ups and downs, and it, it may be related to the economic cycles. It could be related to some industry cycle or having a client walk away that's got 40% of your business. Right? All those things are impactful. Right. And we've got to be in a position to be smart. And when, you know, like learning business is a big deal, yeah. right? It's not complex. It's really pretty easy. And yet there's so many mistakes you can make. And what I appreciate with yours is that you learn from it and then can come back. And it's <laughs> like you're putting yourself in a position to not have that happen again. So congratulations yeah. to you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. We're very excited again to have Carrie here. Thanks. And uh, hey, we'll see you on the other side.